Oh, thank you. That's very kind. I don't deserve all that, but thank you. Just want to say how much I love this um, this fellowship. From the day we arrived, we were just so loved, so accepted. Um, thank you for that. If you love everybody the way you love Pino and me when we come in, I can see this church really growing. And it reminds me, Tom, I have to tell you, the first day I came to the Victoria Park, Four Square Church in Victoria Park, obviously, <laughs> I felt such love from God there. And I, that's what I felt when I came here too. So God bless each and every one of you. Okay, I'm not nervous, am I? <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Okay, I brought my glass today because what I want to do is to show you the way I believe we make a toast. Now, in Australia, they say the most ridiculous things, don't they? They say things like bottoms up. Um, what else do they? I can't, my mind's gone blank now. Um, sorry? Cheers. Um, what else? Sorry? Mud in your eye. Mud in your eye? Oh my goodness. Well, let me tell you how the Hebrews say it, the Jewish people. They go, Lechaim, to life. Now that makes sense to me. To life. That's what it's all about. We, we, we say to life because we are people in here who have eternal life. And so it's to life. So say it with me. Lechaim. To life. Bless you. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to bore you, though you might think so now, and I don't want you going to sleep, but I'm going to cover two genealogies. Is that how you say the word? Genealogy? I've been thinking, is it genealogy or genealogy? Okay, I'm doing two genealogies today, so don't you dare go to sleep. Because you know what? It's got a wonderful message in it, and I don't want you to miss it. The first one... And I'm going to put it on the overhead, but if you need to read your Bible, which is wonderful, it's Genesis chapter 5 and verses 1 to 32. So now, this is what I want you to do. You've got homework, except that you don't do it at home, you do it right here. There's a word that is mentioned 17 times, and I need you to tell me at the end of this what that word is. It's mentioned 17 times. You know, when God mentions the word 17 times in a chapter, that means it's an important word and we don't need to miss it. Okay. Oh, sorry, I've got to use this. I forgot. Um, two genealogies. We're going to look at the one of Adam and then we're going to look at the one of Cain. Now, in Cain, okay, let me start reading. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Made it, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and he begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years and begat sons and daughters. You all okay? <laughs> and all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. And Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan. And Enos lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were 905 years and he died. And Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalil. And Canaan lived after he begat 
Mahalalil, 840 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. And Mahalalil lived 65 years and begat Jared. And Mahalalil lived after he begat Jared 830 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalil were 890 and five years, and he died. And Jared lived 162 years, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. And all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. And Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. And Methuselah lived 187 years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 782 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. And Lamech lived 182 years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 595 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were 777 years and he died. And Noah was 500 years old and Noah begat Shem, Ham and Japheth. Can you tell me what the word was? Big, sorry? Uh, no. Sorry? No, lived. That's the word. Lived. <laughs> I know you're thinking, oh, give me a break. I mean, of course they lived. But let me continue and I'll explain it in a little while. I need to now read the genealogy of Cain. Now, this is a short one, so thank goodness for that. Okay. Now, this is just um, 17 times it said, and lived, and lived, and lived, and lived. Okay, so now we're going to read Genesis 4, 17 to 22. Oh, sorry, I've got to put them up, don't I? Okay. Now, this is written by the same person, God, through the hand of Moses, same person. This is a different genealogy. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Mehuyael, and Mehuyael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And Lebech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. Yeah, sorry. Um, what do we notice here in this genealogy? What did you notice as I read that? One of them had two wives. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Anyone else notice something? No, nothing else was noticed? <laughs> oh, sorry? Exactly, this is a smart man. 
There is no mention that anyone had lived. You see, in the first genealogy, it mentioned lived 17 times. In this one, it does not mention that they lived. This genealogy of Cain just existed. Did I miss one there? Sorry, sorry. Yes. They just existed. They were not connected to God. So they were just like rabbits, begetting and begetting and begetting and eating carrots. <laughs> they were disconnected from God. This genealogy of Cain did not make it through the flood. What I want to show you now is just a few names of people in the genealogy of Cain. Because I want some of these names revealed to you just how wicked it was. And I think I'd like you to see that because it'll help you to understand why did God have to send that flood? And um, so I'm getting stressed out because I, I forget that I have to... Yes, I'm going to show you some of the names. Okay. First of all, Cain, it means to acquire. That's what his name means, Cain, Cain. It means to get or to buy. Cain was the one who killed his brother, Abel. He left the presence of God. Do you remember? He went to a place called Nod. Nod is a place of wandering. His heart was always wandering. He never found peace again. Cain is the father of materialism. His name reveals that his life was all about acquiring and getting. And as Christians, it's easy to fall into this trap of always wanting something, never being satisfied with what we have. We need to be thankful for what we have. And you know what? We need to be happy when we see other people being blessed as well. We're living in a very materialistic world today. Do we just live to acquire, to get, to hoard? Jesus warned us not to build barns and fill them. He said, be on guard against greed. Things can be taken from us in just one moment. Well, you saw what happened to Joey. His purse was just taken from him. <laughs> Cain eventually met his wife, and they conceived and had a son and called his name Hanok. That's how you say it, Hanok. This name has to do with education, and it also has to do with dedication. Have you all heard of Hanukkah? That actually means dedication. There's nothing wrong with these things as long as God is in them. I mean, schools today have removed the Lord's Prayer. They teach evolution rather than creation. We need to study to get to know God's Word and more importantly, to get to know God better. Our schools need education that is based on God's word. What are we dedicating our lives to? Are they things that are glorifying to God? When Hanoch grew up and got married, he had a son and called him Irad. Now this word Irad means to go down, to descend. You, you know the word... I'm just throwing this in. The River Jordan is from the same word, Irad. It starts up in Mount Hermon and it flows down, 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 down until it gets to the lowest point on earth, which is the Dead Sea. So it's really a descender, a descender. So this name, Irad, shows us that there's a descent in morals at this stage. Irad has two words in it. One is ir, because it's irad. Ir means city. Ad means forever. This
this is what they call their son, city forever. In other words, who needs God? We've got a city. That's all we need. We've got materialism. That's it. And that's, that's what more or less they were saying. Then Irad grew up and he had a son. And they called his name Mehuyael. Now this name Mehuyael, when you look at it, the green part, Mehu means wipe out. You know when a woman does the dishes or a man and they wipe the dishes? That's what the word Mehu means, to wipe. Ya is short for Yahweh and El at the end is God. Let's wipe the dishes. Let's wipe out God. Who needs God? Who needs Yahweh? That's what they call their son. Can you see what this, this um, generation was like and how they thought? It's let's get rid of God. Then Mehuyael has a son and called him Metushael. And that means those who ask for God should die. Met means die. Sha means ask. El is God. So in other words, let anyone die who asks for God. It's pretty terrible, isn't it? You know, there's people in the world today, and I know some of them, that hate God. They hate Christians. They hate Jews. This is the world we're living in, you know. And we're so isolated and sheltered, we don't get to see or hear a lot about it. But there's a lot of that in this world today. And then we have Lamech. He killed people and he bragged about it. He actually said if Cain was killed, he would be avenged seven times. But if he was killed, he'd be avenged 77 times. And Jesus said the very opposite thing. He said we must forgive 77 times seven, forever and ever. Not by killing and avenging, paying people back. And Lamech was the first one, as you noticed, that he had two wives. One was to bear his children and the other one was pleasure. He was full of self-confidence. Do you know our confidence needs to be in the Lord, not in anything else? In Genesis 6, 5, this is, these are God's own words. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The names that I just showed you in the genealogy of Cain show us a picture of a people who don't want God in their lives and all they are concerned about is materialism, getting lots of degrees, becoming wealthy, murdering, having multiple wives. And God is not glorified and he's not even mentioned. No wonder God sent the flood. Would you agree with me that that's what, how the world looks today? Now we can understand why the genealogy of Adam had the word lived. Because they were connected to God. We're only living when we are connected to God. Otherwise, we are existing. After Cain killed Abel, Adam and Eve had another son and they called him Seth. Now this word means thirsty. Set, it means thirsty. His name means to be thirsty. People began to call upon the name of the Lord again from that time. They were connected to God. The genealogy of Adam went through the flood in the person of Noah. But the genealogy of Cain, it ended at the flood. 
But according to the Midrash, this is not something you have to believe now if you don't want to, though I do. Um, we learn that one lady from the line of Cain, her name was Naama, and she was the daughter of Lamach. Apparently Noah married her. This is what the sages believe. So that there was one person, Naama, who actually did make it through the flood because of Noah. And the reason I like this because it just fits in with, let me tell you, um, God allowed a lady from a line which would end at the flood to connect to a righteous man, Noah, and therefore be saved. And that's what God wants to do today, in this day. He wants us, the ones who are living, to connect with those who are not living so that they may be saved as we are. And that's why I just, whether you believe it or not doesn't matter, but the principle is correct. What do we learn from all of this? We need to realise that living is all about being connected to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Life is to be found in Christ. God is the source of life. He is the God who lives and gives life. If we just live to build cities, accumulate riches, knowledge, prestige, then we are just like rabbits that beget and beget and really our lives would be empty and without meaning. Now let me return to Cain. I want you to notice something important. In Genesis 4-6, God came to Cain. He actually had a father-son chat with him. God came to him in the name of Yahweh. This is the first time God appears as Yahweh in the Bible in Genesis chapter 4. In Genesis 4, 6, this is, um, And Yahweh said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Surely if you improve yourself, you will be lifted. Nasa. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But if you do not improve yourself, sin sits at the door. Its desire is toward you, but you can conquer it. Until this point in Genesis, the only name for God has been Elohim. If you read all of Genesis chapter 1, you will just see Elohim, Elohim, Elohim the whole time which is just God. But here with Cain, he appears as Yahweh. Yahweh. And Yahweh is the covenant, compassionate, caring, counsellor, redeemer God, the caring God. Of course there's only one God, we know that. But the names reveal different aspects. And Yahweh is this caring counsellor, covenant, personal God. And that's how he appears to Cain. In chapter 2, when he was just dealing with um, man and woman, he, the name Yahweh Elohim is used, but the two are going together. Right? But now with Cain, it's just Yahweh. God comes to Cain as Yahweh. He doesn't come as the judge or creator of the world, but as the loving, compassionate, caring, personal and covenant God. Now, I'm going to show you the name of Yahweh. Now, at the top there is modern Hebrew. That's what we read today. Um, no, I can't use it, so it doesn't matter. But the very top line of Hebrew is modern Hebrew. That's what I read in the Bible. But the second line is the early Semitic Hebrew, the original, pretty close to the original Hebrew. And it was in pictograph form. 
And those people, every letter has a meaning in Hebrew. So, and let me tell you, you read from right to left. Now, if you look at the first letter, it means not only a hand, but a bit of the arm as well, right? So you have a hand. See that man, he's going like this, behold. In other words, see. Then you have a nail. And then you have another C. So what does the name Yahweh mean? It means hand, C. Nail, C. Did you get it? Did you all get it over this side? What does that remind you of? It's Yeshua, Jesus. Let me tell you, there's no J in Hebrew. So there's no such thing as Jehovah or even Jesus. It's Yahweh and Yeshua and Yerushalayim for, you know, or Yaakov for J Jacob. I'm not saying you're not allowed to say Jesus, but I'm just telling you there is no J. So why don't you get used to Yeshua? How beautiful is that? And that's Yahweh. Hand, see. Nail, see. That's the name of Yahweh. That's our beautiful Yahweh. That's our beautiful Jesus, Yeshua. And here in connection with Cain, God uses his name Yahweh, which is his compassionate, loving, caring, personal name. He speaks to Cain and tells him that if he does good, he will be nasa, which means forgiven, married, carried, and lifted up. Yahweh encourages him by telling him that he can do it. NASA, you probably heard of NASA in America, it's a space station where a lot of rockets are lifted up, lifted up. And I, I, I wonder whether they got the name from the Hebrew NASA, which means to lift up. Now this word NASA, I'm going to talk about this, it appears in Isaiah 53. It is in, it's used in regard to our sin, in verse 12 of 53 and sicknesses in verse 4 of 53. In other words, Jesus, Nasa, he married them to himself, our sin and our sicknesses. He took them all upon himself. He lifted them, he carried them, he suffered them, he was married to them, that means he became one with them and he forgave them. What a beautiful word. Nasa. And I was reminded of this word yesterday and I thought, thank you, Lord, how timely. One word for marriage in Hebrew is nisuin. There it is at the bottom, nisuin, but you read from right to left. And... Wow, I just thought, wow, how wonderful. You know, you know, I'm just throwing it, you know, we talk, sometimes we have problems in our marriage, and boy, I sure have had a few. <laughs> but, you know, there's one word for marriage, which is nisuin. And in that word nisuin, can you see it in the Hebrew? It's got the same three letters as nasa. Now, when you have problems in your marriage, you often think, oh, gee, I've got to run and find a counsellor. Let me tell you, the Hebrew tells you, God tells us in his holy language, he tells you that the two of you, what is marriage? It's lifting each other up. It's carrying each other. It's being married to each other, which means you become one. And it's continually forgiving one another. I mean, there's a lot of pastors in this room. If ever you have to give a sermon on marriage, I would encourage you to use this word. <laughs> because this one word has all of that meaning in it. 
all of that meaning in it. Can you see it? And this is what Yahweh said to Cain. You know, when he saw Cain, Cain had such a bad attitude. Um, he was angry. But God, nevertheless, didn't come as God. He didn't come as Elohim with a big stick, as the judge, as the creator. He came as Yahweh. And he said to him, you know, if you do the right thing, I will nasa. I will lift you. I will carry you. I will marry you. I will forgive you. I will do all that for you. And this is what he says to all of you if you're in sin. If you're struggling with a sin, this is how God comes to you as Yahweh. And he wants to help you. He wants to help you just as he wants. Whatever he did to Cain, wanted to do for Cain, is what he wants to do for us. God hasn't changed. Sin. You see, Cain was in sin. He was angry. Sin sits comfortably. It's like a leopard that's just sprawled out on the ground. He's so comfortable. He doesn't want to move. But it's up to you and me to say, get up and go. Isn't it? Sin is at each one of us in our openings, in our ears, in our eyes, in our mouth. We have to deal with sin because it's always there, sitting comfortably. But it's up to us to tell it to go. Right? This, this is God's advice, not mine. But yes, it is mine as well today. But that's what God told Cain. He said, if you do well, I will massage you. But sin sits comfortably with you. But you've got to tell it to go. But as we know, Cain chose to do the evil thing. He killed his brother Abel and then he chose to leave the presence of God. That was his choosing. So I guess, I think I've already said it, but if you're battling with sin... Yahweh wants to help you today just as he wanted to help Cain. Nothing has changed. You just need to turn to him and ask him to help you. You know, Satan tells you you can't do it. But then you've got Yahweh who says, yes, you can. And I will help you. You're not on your own. You know, we need to always see Yahweh as the one with a hand and a nail, which he did for you. Each one of us is encouraged in Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 and 20. Let me put it up for you. I have placed life and death before you, blessing and cursing, and you shall choose life so that you will live, you and your offspring, to love Yahweh your God, to listen to his voice, and to cleave. The word in Hebrew is davak, which means to glue. For he is your life and the length of your days. We are to glue in him. And I'll just put up there as well, not only are we to glue to God, we're also to glue to our husbands or to our wives. I don't like the word cleave or I don't even like the word cling. Let me tell you why. After I've had dinner at home and there's leftover food, I usually put it all in a plate and put glad wrap, cling wrap over it. Put it in the fridge for tomorrow. But the next day when I go to get the food, the cling wrap just comes off easily. And I think a lot of our marriages are like that. The cling wrap has just come off so easily. And that's why I don't like that word. And I don't even like the word cleave because to cleave some, well, I think it can mean different, but it also means to, to divide, to split, as a butcher does when he's cleaving his meat. Um, the word I like is dabak. And it means glue. So we are to glue to one another and to God. Number one. 
So back to Cain, we are, we are to command sin to go. We're not allowed to make its home in us. If we want to see things like fear and worry, hate, immorality, jealousy disappear from our lives, then we've got to stop feeding them. Feeding means to give them time, give them a lot of thought, constant attention. We are to feed the good things that we want to grow. We need to give the good things time and our attention and we need to starve the bad things in our lives that we want to die. You know, there was a tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden. It had good in it and it had bad in it. It was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But you know what? It just stood there. Any evil that there was was contained in that tree. As long as no one invested in that tree, it did not hurt anyone. As long as Adam and Eve stayed away from that tree, it, no one got hurt. Because any evil or good was contained in that tree. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's only because they decided to invest in that tree that the tumour of evil grew. If they'd left it alone, there would have been no evil here today. And since then, people have invested in that tree. And that's why this world is so full of sin and evil. We must invest in Christ. We are to feed on him. You know, we've all got electrical toasters in our kitchens. The toaster must be plugged into the socket. But not only that, it needs to be switched on, doesn't it? Switched on. There needs to be a connection so that electricity can flow through into the toaster. And the toaster will not work if we don't switch on the power. Are we all God's children here? I believe we are. Are we switched on? Does his life and power flow through us? Are we connected? Have we turned on the switch? We need to ask for that power. We need to get connected. We need to get as close as we possibly can to the Father so that our lives can be powerful. If we are not connected, then power will not be there. I'm almost through now, okay, so relax. <laughs> But I still got something nice coming. When we read the genealogy of Adam or the connected ones, we saw the name Enoch. He's the one that God took. This man, it is said, he walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Now, the Hebrew language is such that sometimes you can get a word and turn it around into a mirror image and, and it's still correct. It's just an amazing language. Because they're still the same letters, they're just turned around. Enoch speaks to us of the rapture because God took him. And we're all waiting for the rapture today, aren't we? Now the word for walk, that's the top word. Remember from right to left. Halach, halach, means walk. Turn it around and you get kalah. Can you see that? Mirror image. Same three letters, just in a different, um, you know, in a mirror image. Where the bride in here, we are to turn ourselves around. If we're walking this way, turn around, we need to walk towards the Father because we're the bride. So we've got to get as close as possible to him. 
we are to walk as Enoch walked, connected to God. Every day of the year he lived for 365 um, years. You know, last week Pastor Don, he told us very clearly that we are at a threshold in our lives. He said we are to walk over that threshold. But he says when you walk over that threshold, he said there are things that we cannot take with us. We have to leave them behind. It's a new walk and we've got to be so connected to God and there's some things we cannot hold on to anymore. You know, I just ex you know that what this means, don't you? There's some things we cannot take with us. We've got to leave them behind. They'll just mar us. They'll ruin our walk. We've got to leave them behind. I thought that was such a wonderful word he brought last week. We have to walk in righteousness. We are the righteousness of God and we've got to know that. And when we do know that, then we know that there's some things we cannot do, some things we cannot watch, some things we cannot entertain. It's a new walk. It's a holy walk. And if we want to be raptured as Enoch was, and I'm not trying to put fear in anyone here, um, we've got to walk in a worthy manner. Because can you see how the bride and walking goes together? So this is why I like Hebrew, because you can see walk, you can see bride, and the two go together. There is a walk that we've got to walk. Jesus wants a pu beautiful, pure, cleansed bride. We must get ready. We must get prepared. God is calling the bride today. Hey, that's you and me, guys. We are to awake, wake up, arise and shine. Change our direction and our walk towards him. Walk connected to him. As a bride prepares herself for her wedding day, prepare yourself and me too. We've got to prepare ourselves. We are here for a purpose. Don't be like those around you. Don't think like society thinks. Don't be who others think you should be. Make Jesus your role model. He's my role model. I don't look to anyone. I look to Jesus. I want to be like him. He never lets me down. And he comes to me as Yahweh. He comes to me in love. He doesn't come with a stick. He's loving and caring. Be who Jesus created you to be. And I'm going to close with this. An ark, that means Noah's ark. It's, the ark of the covenant was a different word for ark. But this is like a Noah's ark. Um, it's Teba. Teba. That's the word for ark. But it also is one of the words for word, W-O-R-D, word, Teva. Noah built an ark and he and his family were saved by being in that ark. They went through the flood and they were saved. Now God's not telling you to build a boat, okay, so just relax. But he is asking you to build a teva. Yes, he is. But it's a different one. It's the word. The word. We need to get the word inside of us. Build an ark. Because it's this ark or the word that's going to get you through life. It's going to get you through, through tribulations and trials and the horrible things you go through in life and the good things. But that's what's going to get us through. And we know that the word is not only the, the written word, it's also the living word. And it's Jesus that will get us through. And it's his word that will get us through. But we need to get that word into us. So let's live and be connected 
to Yahweh. Let's all toast from now on and we'll say L'chaim to life, to life. Now I would feel very privileged if I could say the blessing over you. Could I do that? I'll just say it in English first because you, you know, I want you to know what I'm saying. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. So just close your eyes and I'll say it in Hebrew. Vivarechecha Adonai veishmorecha. Yaea Adonai panavelecha vichunecha. Yisa Adonai panavelecha veyasem lecha shalom. And may you all, you all have shalom in your lives. May you have peace with God, peace in yourselves, and peace with one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.